party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week, I am joined by Jim Dag from Saddle Shaped Games for a playthrough of his game, Just Got Real. Just Got Real is the collaborative, zero-prep, rules-light action movie role-playing game. It's designed to recreate your favorite popcorn blockbusters like Die Hard, Commando, The Expendables, The Transporter, Hard Boiled. The list goes on. You get the idea. I had so much fun playing this game, and I cannot wait to dive in, so get your popcorn ready and get ready to experience Jackson Alamo in No More Cowboys. But before the movie gets rolling, I have a few Patreon backers to thank. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to Will Let, VJ, Rich Howard, and Richard Kreutz Landry. Your support of the show means so much, and I am... Thank you. Really, truly thank you. If you'd like to consider joining the Party of One Patreon, it's a great time to do it. We just hit our first major funding goal, which means that every month on the Party of One Discord at bit.ly.com slash Party of One Discord, I'm going to be running uh, group games, games that don't quite fit the premise of Party of One, but they're still some of my favorites, like Worldwide Wrestling, Ribbon Drive, and others. It's going to be awesome. And you can get a seat in those games for as little as $1 a month by heading over to patreon.com slash Party of One Podcast. With all that out of the way, let's throw it over to me in the past so he can get started with your feature presentation. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am sitting down with Jim Dag. Jim, thanks so much for coming on Party of One. Always a pleasure. So uh, as we are playing your game, why don't you, uh, this week, why don't you give us the big pitch of it? Let the audience, the listeners at home know about the very cool game that we're playing this week. All right. Our game is Just Got Real. It's zero prep, rules light, collaborative action movie role playing. Uh, So when I say that, I'm the GM. I've shown up. I've done approximately two minutes of prep based on the character generation and the pitch that we did uh, in uh, just before the show. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that. We're going to go completely off the cuff and do uh, fast paced action movie action movie role playing. Uh, Jeff is as much an author of this as I am. So we're going to be bouncing plot ideas off each other. The wouldn't it be cool kind of things. Mm -hmm. My goal is uh, I'm not necessarily here to challenge Jeff and his character so much as I am to try to make this as exciting of an experience for us. And of course, for you as possible. I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Like with the stuff that we cooked up uh, in the character generation session is very good. And I'm ready to dive into this action movie. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, this is going to be juicy. Uh, this is, gonna be so real this good. is one of my favorite plots we've generated. I think uh, I think this is going to be good. So let's dive in. All right. Um, now I am not about to try to sing for you a theme song because my God, no one would ever listen to your show again. So. Uh, We're just going to say, you know, imagine some kind of really deep patriotic theme song Mm because this is this is the mid 90s. Right. So imagine the VHS era. This is you have found this VHS tape because you were looking for something else. And the thing you wanted was sold out or was all rented out. So you grabbed this instead. Like, uh, I imagine it's right next to the, uh, like, season one VHS box set of Walker, Texas Ranger. And it's this yep. movie called uh, No More Cowboys. And on the cover is, a guy, is like, half, half body of a guy with a bloody American flag in one hand and an unnecessarily large revolver in the other. Yep. And it's in, you know, the, the background is just jet black. Mm-hmm. So... Patriotic music plays No More Cowboys, you know, starring Jeff Stormer as Jackson Alamo. (laughs) So uh, fade in on uh, Sunset. It is the Texas desert. Um, There's a lizard in the foreground and he's, you know, chasing clean. He's sneaking up on a bug and then. In the back is a motorcycle, like an old, old Harley Davidson Mm -hmm. lowrider. And it's on its way to what looks almost like a, you know, kind of like a posh hotel lodge in the middle of this desert, like 50 miles west of San Antonio. Um, So, Jeff, tell me, tell me the next shot, how we look at your uh, how we look at your guy uh, on his motorcycle. Um, it is a slow pan up from the wheel of the motorcycle, so we get a whole slow body shot of him driving. His uh, his ponytail is blowing in the wind. Yes. He is wearing a brown leather duster, and 
and um, a tank top and blue jeans. And he's got uh, he's got bright white sneakers on. It is very unofficial, yet he does still have on the on the leather duster. He has that distinct uh, police badge. Right. Like he's got okay, the badge so right on the right on the front of the coat and he's driving. He's got the, cla- the real 90s sunglasses. He's uh, I'm actually going to say specifically not only just 90 sunglasses, uh, the Bret Hart style wraparounds. <laughs> and he's real stoic and silent. We said the badge was what? Texas Highway Patrol? Yeah, Texas Highway Patrol. Yeah, he's a he's a highway patrolman, but he's not dressed as a highway patrolman. He's dressed as a as a as a fr- uh, a man who believes in freedom. Oh, yeah. And and what about his hat? Uh, there is no hat. There is no cowboy hat here because there are no more cowboys. <laughs> well, we'll certainly see about that, I think. So uh, camera switches to the inside of what looks to be like a conference room, right? Water jug, mm-hmm. coffee pot. There's a couple of guys, one, you know, brandishing a decent sized pump action shotgun. And in front of him is uh, a woman with blonde, short hair, uh, who's got duct tape over the mouth. Um, she's very well dressed, like, you know, blazer pantsuit kind of thing. Um, clearly not having a good time. Mm hmm. And uh, the guy, the guy looks down and and says, "You just stay quiet for another." Oh, he looks at his, he looks at his, you know, gaudy gold pocket watch. Another couple hours, and you know, we'll send you home to your family. And and you know, she, you know, mm, mm, clearly not happy about what this guy has to say. We zoom out to uh, to a high level of the uh, of the compound and you see a, a few folks walking around. You know, some of them are having a good time at the bar or whatever. Uh, clearly not an employee manning the bar. Uh, mm-hmm. They're all visibly armed, just kind of looking around, not not on high alert. And then back to the motorcycle as it pulls around to the long winding drive up to where you would drop your passengers off of like a like a two, charter tour bus kind of thing. And uh, I step off of the motorcycle. I, 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 I reach into the saddlebag of the bike and I grab three things. All right. I grab my gun and I stash it in my shoulder holster. I grab my wallet and I get a long shot of my family. And I'm look, I look at it. We get a real close up shot of the three of us like smiling. And I kind of like, cuts, cuts to a close up of the face and I smile back. I'm like, I'll be home soon. And I stash the and I stash that. And third, I, I grab one of those dollar store bodega like uh brain teaser books. Oh and I man. flip it open and it's just like puzzle after puzzle of half completed Sudoku. And I pull <laughs> it out and I'm like I look at it because I'm like breathing. I look at it and I try to breathe and I focus for a moment. And I just like, nah, not now, not now, not now. I can't. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure it out. So we uh, we zoom out a little bit and uh, through the glass doors, you see somebody walking, you know, in front, not visibly looking at our uh, protagonist, but, you know, definitely close by. Um, He's got a he's he's got his gun in his holster. He's just kind of walking around. He's got a cup of coffee in his hand. And we, we, we get this close up shot as we see uh, we see Jackson come up behind him and try to like lock him in a headlock and drag him outside through the glass doors. I love it. OK, so uh, I'm guessing the objective isn't necessarily to take are, are you trying to take him out or just drag him out so you can talk to him? Uh, drag him out so that I can like I think drag him out so that I can talk to him. Okay, Um, so this is kind of aggressive and also sneaky. So uh, what I would have you do is roll your preference of either your fight or your stunt stats. Now, the way rolls work in this game is you've got a set of stats in front of you from two to five dice in the categories of fight, stunt, charm, analyze, and sneak. You're going to roll those dice, and then you're going to tell me how many of those dice come up fives or sixes. Those are going to be hits. Uh, I'm going to roll on behalf of the bad guy myself. 
Uh, I've got a challenge card in front of me with his, uh, basically his difficulty level on it. And, you know, if we were at the same table, you'd see I have two dice in my hand because this guy's Mm -hmm. kind of a chump. Uh, And what happens is based on who gets more hits and we'll uh, see what happens when we get there. Uh, I'm going to roll my stunt, which is five dice. Uh, I got and I got one hit. Okay, now so did I. So right now that's a split success, which means you're going to get him out. But uh, something is going to happen that you may not like. Now, if you want to let that stand, that's fine. And we can ro- we can roll with that. Uh, but you also have three elements in front of you. You have your roll, your driver and your quirk. If you think one of those applies and you want to check it off, uh, you can tag that and then re-roll all the dice that came up misses if you want to try for a scot-free success. Uh, I think I'm actually okay letting it stand where something something bad is going to happen because I feel like that's a good first act of an action movie of like doing something and then problems happen. Okay, so what I'm going to say then is you get him and, you know, when you first get him into a headlock, he lets go of his cup of coffee and it shatters as you drag him otherwise silently out the front door. Uh, I drag him... I throw him against like there are some some artificial or like planted imported bushes that I throw him into that are like half dead. (laughs) What the? And I pull my gun and I put it right under his chin. Who the hell are you? I got I got two questions for you, tough guy. Two questions. And and let me tell you something. And I like cock the gun. Your life is riding on both of them. Question one. Where's the girl? I know I know you've got her. I know that you've got her locked tied up here. Just tell me where she is. Question two. And he reaches into his jacket. Flips out the book. How can the seven? How can the seven? I'm, am I getting am I putting the seven in the wrong spot? Because it looks like it's got to go here. But it, but that means that the four has got to go here and here. Are you frick? Ugh. No, man, you got your XY wing all messed up. The four goes on the bottom right. And he takes a long look at it. No, you're absolutely right. All right. Oh, cool. Cool. Now tell me where the girl is. (coughs) He's he's kind of he's he's not choking, but he's you know, you're pressing the gun up in his throat Mm -hmm. and he's kind of struggling a little bit. Conference room, second floor. Go through the bar, up the up the fire escape. You'll figure it out pretty fast. Thanks for the tip, and thanks for the Sudoku help. Yeah, <laughs> I got I got something I got something special for you. It's called your life, and I pissed a whip him right upside the head. All right, and he like he goes limp, kind of falls falls uh further back into the into the bushes, um. You know, of course he's alive, even though that's like mm-hmm. seriously dangerous. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll come up later. In the meantime, the door gets kicked open and you hear the pump of a shotgun. <laughs> who the who the hell are you and what are you doing here? And there's three guys. I put my hand up, still holding the pistol, and I turn around, big smile on my face, and I flash the badge. And we this is when we get the close up of the Texas Highway Patrol badge. Right. Jackson Alamo. But you can call me your worst nightmare. I don't have time for this. Merc this fool. And they all draw their guns and start shooting. What do you do? I think I go low and I try to tackle one of them and take them off the ground so that they can't necessarily open fire without shooting their own their own guy. Okay, so you're just basically trying to mix it up with them at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go hard. Big 90s, big 90s fight scene. So, um... Remember, I said these guys have two dice. Well, now that they're mm-hmm. acting as a group, uh, I'm going to give them a third for that advantage. Okay. Uh, you are very clearly rolling fight here. Yes, absolutely. All right. That is I, two hits. That's good. I've got one. Uh, so what I'm going to say is you go low and you knock this guy down and he's like, uh, y- you just knock him out cold. And these two guys kind of shoot not at each other, but forward a little bit where you just were and the bullets cross and there's that, you know, pretty little bullet puff off one of the columns that's holding up the, uh, holding up the, the, the drive up area. And you've got this guy down. You're kind of, you're kind of on your knee in between them. Uh, I am going to 
throw an elbow into one guy, like, kind of, like, throw an elbow at one guy's groin and then try to, like, point the gun at the other. Okay, I like it. Um, so I think we're in the same boat. Yeah. Two hits. Okay, yeah, you... The guy, the guy takes one right, right in the, uh, right in the beans and just, you know, drops to his knees and groans and, uh, you've got the gun up to the other. And what do you do? I, I, I pull the gun on him. I lean in close and I whisper, you see the, you see the guy out in the bushes. That guy did me a favor. He helped my Sudoku puzzle. Me not killing him. That was his gift. You? You? You haven't helped me with my Sudoku puzzle. And then I pull the trigger. OK, um, that's that's good. Uh, now, I I'm going to say up front, I actually had four boxes for this one. So what I would say is you need another success. But I like that cinematically enough. I'm just going to let that stand. All right. Um, all right. So you've dealt with these guys. There's been some gu- there's been a couple gunshots. Um, you hear some screaming. We're going to cut back real quick to the conference room where uh the woman just screams out loud, screams about as loud as she can manage, which isn't particularly loud. Um, And uh, the guy, the guy said, what part of keep quiet did you not understand? And he pumps and he like brings his shotgun up close to her. You know, I can just wipe you off the, wipe you off the planet right now. And nobody would ever know. And then we'll cut back to you. And I think, yeah, I think that like I I am I I throw his body in the bushes near the guy that's unconscious, which is going to be horrible when that guy wakes up. But I don't care. I'm a badass. (laughs) Right. And I I get ready to go inside. Like I'm just about to take my first step and we hear a beeping and I look and I I look and it's my beeper because Mm -hmm. it's the 90s. Oh, yeah. And it is I think this is when we get our first flash to. Uh, my my driver, which is that I got to get home to my family. It is okay. we see a shot of my wife on a payphone outside of the school, and we see a big like banner that just says like talent show. Okay, so the talent show is today then. Yeah, the talent show is tonight, and I've got to make it. Okay, so I picture maybe she's, uh, you know, she the the phone rings a little bit, and then you know the beep the beep goes off. She hangs up, walks in, and it's like. You know, it, it the the talent show doesn't start for another couple hours. They're hanging banners and they're mm-hmm. you know setting up the stage, testing audio equipment. And she just you know, she looks at her she looks at her watch like he said he was gonna be here. Don't tell me it's work again. And we cut back and I'm looking at my beeper and I'm like, sorry, baby, it's work again. You know, I'll tell her later. <laughs> All right. Um. So uh, you pass as you pass by the bar, the guy who was, you know, tending bar reaches, you know, he, he looks like he's about to reach under the bar for a weapon. But then he looks at what just happened, thinks better of it and just falls, just dives for cover. I uh, I pull out I pull out a crumpled single from my wallet or from my pocket and I kind of like haphazardly put it on the bar. Good service gets rewarded with a tip. And I walk past. Um, and uh, when you uh, as you're about to as you're about to walk up the stairs, he uh, he says, hey, and he tosses you a beer. I like you. I like your style. And I I, I, I crack the beer with the gun, despite the fact that that's going to mess up the beer and the gun. And I like take a swig and I put it on the bar and I'm like for later. And I, I hop onto the I like crawl out the window onto the fire escape. Okay. Um, so when you, uh, when you get to the, uh, you get to the fire escape and climb up a little bit, stop short when, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple more dudes that seem like they're patrolling those hallways. Um, and there's a, there's a, like one of those signs get like, you know, bathroom this way, vending this way, bar Mm -hmm. this way, pool down conference room. And it's got like an it, it's it's an angle forward right, and there's a couple of double doors there uh, that seem to lead into that conference room. And I I'm going to like real, real like 
I'm going to start tiptoeing towards the conference room as soon as I see that, like sneak slip inside and start like tiptoeing towards it. OK. All right. So uh, in this case, I'm going to have you roll your sneak. All right. And I'm going to be rolling on behalf of the baddies as usual. Now, your sneak, you said you, you put a two in sneak. It's, right? two, it's two. It is. This isn't going to go. This isn't going to go great. Uh, I got zero hits. It didn't go great. OK, so I've got one. And again, you can tag an element if you want. I don't know if that it, it seems like you kind of want this to go south. Yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely like I think. Yeah, I think we're going to keep this at a failure. OK, um, so, yeah, you 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 know, you're just about to touch the door of the uh, of the conference room. Uh, and then you realize just a little too late that it's locked and you don't have the key. And when one of them hears the beep of the uh, the beep of the door as it refuses to open, he's like, hey, and two more uh, two more of these guys just come at you and they've got you pincer and they start, they, you know, they're about to start shooting. And I like I, I turn around just in time to see them pull their guns and I do the Han Solo shrug, like with the gun in my hand, like, yay. And then I'm going to grab a housekeeping cart. <laughs> wheel it in front of me and duck behind it and start like taking shots okay that that's interesting um so th- from where i stand if they've got you surrounded you've only got cover on one side or the other so are you i guess you're attacking the one that you don't have cover against yeah that makes sense yeah i've covered i've sort of like half dove half half dove and half like thrown it in front of me so that maybe the guy on my left, like it, like it, I've got cover from him as I'm trying to like real quickly take out the guy on my right. Okay. So actually let me spin this a different way. There's one other way we could play this, which is if you want to make a stunt roll, uh, what I can say is if you hit that, I'll give you some, uh, some bonus dice on a follow up fight because you're in a better entrenched position. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. One. Just one? One hit, yeah. All right, I've got two. Um, So where it stands right now is um, you'll do it in the fiction, but it won't give you any mechanical benefit. And one of the uh, one of the bullets uh, that they fire is going to graze you. So you'll have like a bleeding left arm as a point of stress. Now, the way stress works is uh, each injury you take is going to inflict one possibly more if i get a lot of hits once you take three you're out of the fight now this is an action movie so that doesn't necessarily mean you're dead it just means you're done and in Mm -hmm. you know since there's only one member of the party and they can't pick you back up we'll probably fade in as they've captured you so if you want to let that stand that's cool uh this may not be a bad time to break out one of your elements though yeah i think this is when i'm going to break out uh one of them i'm going to break out one of my elements i'm going to tag my role of vigilante okay and i think like i get i think what happens is i swing it like i take the shot right like i like my graze is my arm and i maybe like grab the because on a, on a so if I tag it that does that automatically make it oh no I reroll my missed dice is what it is correct that one hit stands and then you'd reroll your other four dice got it got it got it yeah that is one two more so that makes a total of three okay perfect so yeah at this point you're in pretty good shape um so you know you you said narratively it still grazes you but it's not stress it's basically just enough to piss you off it tears the it tears my coat and i'm like yeah. i like this coat and so it's you've got this big gash in the coat and it's like just like barely grazes the skin um so it's you know it's like a little bit of blood but mm-hmm. not like really bad just just enough to give you character uh and since you've beat me by one that means you now have uh one die forward on your fight rules against these guys until such time as that cart won't help you okay so i picture you go around it like you know, maybe you bull past the guy go like and uh now you've got them both on one side of you as he stands back up and gets his bearings yeah that makes that makes perfect sense and then i'm behind the cart i pop out and i i try to shoot him I try to shoot one of the guys like in the knee so that he kind of falls forward and I can grab his I can grab his shotgun. Okay, that sounds good. Now, um, 
this is this is more of a narrative game, so really weapons don't have much of an effect, uh, but it does look pretty darn cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, let's do it. So you're rolling five dice now, yes. right? Four for your fight plus one. Yes, and that is three hits. Uh, so believe it or not, I've also got three hits. Um, I don't feel like it's all that interesting for me to just inflict stress on you. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say the cart takes a few more bullets and just falls apart. So, you know, you, you, you totally, you totally drill this first guy and then he fires enough bullets. The cart just falls apart and you're just sitting there taking cover behind nothing. So that one die bonus doesn't apply anymore. And this is, I think like, I'm, I, I, I take the shot a few more bullets and then I just like grab the remnants of the cart and like shove them forward, trying to like basically slam the second dude into the wall. I like it. Let's do that. All right. So I'm down to two dice because there's only one guy acting against you right now. Three hits. Oh, you crush this dude. All right. So there's only one dude left and there's only one success box on my on my track. So one hit kills him or at least takes him out of the fight. And I think so. Uh, what do you want to what do you want out of that other hit? Like uh, in do you want some information and advantage to the next to the next scene? What do you picture in here? Uh, I think it's got to be the key card to get into the conference room, right? Like it's got to be like there's got to be like a key card around his neck. Well, you've got that anyway, right? Because you took him out. Oh, yeah, right. Um, so maybe maybe it's that this guy just like, let's 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 tell you what, let's cut back to the conference room for a second. And Big John's like, yeah, yeah, Ellen, you hear that? Ellen is apparently the uh, the blonde haired mm-hmm. woman in the suit. Y- you hear them take you hear my boys taking this fool out. You don't have any chance. So this guy, this guy's so cocky, you basically have the drop on him. At yeah, this that's point. exactly what it is. You're going to die forward, I think, to your first action. Because I think what it is, is he says that, and then the doors open. And, and he's put his weapon down, right? He's got the shotgun on the table, mm-hmm. so now you have the drop on him. And he's this yeah. big, hulky dude. Like, he's played, like, by Joe Don Baker or something mm-hmm. with the big white hat. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. And, and you recognize this guy. This guy's name is Big John. He's a, uh, you know, he's a he's a well-known criminal. Mm. And you're pretty sure he's attached to the, uh, you're pretty sure he's attached to uh, the, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to make this too on the nose. Uh, let's say the Eagle Party. Mm, yeah. Which is, uh unsurprisingly the people you know ellen uh mckenzie is her name as your witness was planning on testifying against yeah i think that i think what happens is we see big john lean back in his chair and put the put the shotgun down and say like there it is they took care of him as the door opens and we get a shot from ellen's perspective her eyes go wide as big john's just leaning back in the chair and then we cut to the other camera shot a lot of cuts this is one of those movies with a lot of cuts Oh, yeah. And it's over his shoulder. We see the door and we see uh, we see Jackson standing there, a smoking gun in his hand, shotgun slung over his shoulder. And we kind of flash back because the two of them lock eyes. We flash back to her, like explain her coming forward with a folder of documents saying that they've been ordering guns and weapons and they're planning something big the eagle party they're just this small fringe political movement but they're planning something big they're doing a lot somebody's got to stop them because i think that people are going to get hurt now were you part of this conference or were you like just kind of seeing like looking over your chief's shoulder or something uh i i am i'm looking over his shoulder doing sudoku (laughs) yes i think that that we get the we get the shot of me look of me like as she's talking about this with, with with the with the chief, actually, even better, she's telling the chief this, and he's a, he's no selling it. As I'm looking at this book, being like, "Who does this crap? Nobody. I, I'm I'm this this. I hate this. This isn't for me." Yeah. Okay. So when inevitably this guy uh, chooses not to chooses not to investigate, like he's like, you know, we need to be calm about this when she's captured. You know, we 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 see you, uh, you know, in this briefing with your chief. Like, no, we we can't just go in guns blazing. We got to figure out what's going on. Correction. You can't go in guns blazing. 
Yes. And then we're back to the uh, back to the scene in the conference room. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jackson wa- Jackson has the shotgun over his shoulder, the gun, the smoking gun, the smoking revolver at his side. And he like walks in and Big John still isn't looking at him. Mm-hmm. And we, we see just this beautiful, perfect reaction shot when he says, hey, Big Johnny, it's been a while. No one's called me Big Johnny since 1982. Who the hell are you? And uh, I've got I've got like I point the shotgun back at him like I've got my shotgun at him and I'm like, I'm the guy that's taking you in, Big Johnny. Yeah, we'll see about that. And he reaches for his weapon. And oh, I definitely like I shoot the I try to shoot. I'm going to try to shoot the gun, not Big Johnny. Okay. All right. I like where your head's at. So I'm thinking a success on this is probably going to be a debuff on Big John because you've got a gun and he doesn't. Makes sense. And uh, you've got to die forward from the benefit from the previous fight. Okay. So you're rolling fight plus one. That's five. That is one one hit. That's not great. Oh, that's that's a, that's that's a tough break because I've got two. Uh, so actually, I'll give you a choice. Um, does he get the gun and graze you? Or does he get the gun, Ellen screams, and he pops her in the head? Not with a gun, but just like knocks her out with the butt uh, of the gun. I think I take the hit. I think I go, I think I shoot the gun. Maybe I shoot, maybe I shoot at his shotgun, but he's got another like gun holstered that I didn't know about. Okay, yeah, I think, I think I like that better. He like pulls out his like, you know, Colt 45 looking thing mm-hmm. and uh, just, you know, puts around into, oh, let's say like, Let's say it's like the meaty part of no, he, he wouldn't really have. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say it's the meaty part of your thigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to do, you know, uh, like. F- f- so for your one stress, write down flesh wound, flesh wound. Um, so that's one out of three. Uh, you can definitely recover that later. But uh, let's see if you, we can see if you can get out of this one first. And at this point, like he runs behind runs behind Ellen and uh, puts the puts the gun kind of over her shoulder and he's using her as a human shield. And uh, at that exact moment, like the minute he uses her as a human shield, I like pull up the gun like I'm not even going to try taking the shot. And instead, I'm just okay. real, I'm like conf- I'm a walking towards him and I'm just trying to like goad him into taking the wrong step by being like, come on, Big Johnny. You don't want to hang out with your new friend, Jackson. You don't want to go for a ride. I bet you want to go for a ride. Oh, my God. You're talking to him like like maybe he's like your he's like your pet pug yep. or something. Yep. All right. So I read that as a charm roll. Oh, without a doubt. Yeesh. Two hits. I've also got two. Um, so, yeah, I've the way, what I'm looking at right now is, uh, yeah, he you definitely have hit you definitely have him on the back foot because he's just like he's pissed off at this point. Um, he uh, he's he's just angry. He throws he throws Ellen to the side. He's like, no, nah, this isn't how men fight. Um, and you know, he walks toward you. He puts the gun in his he puts the gun. Uh, he's got the gun in his hand, but he's just like, no, nah, you don't disrespect me like that. You want to fight like men? We fight like men. Go out the hallway, hand to hand. We'll finish this. And I think, oh, God, Jackson, Jackson, no. Jackson's going to shoot him in the leg. Yes, of course he is. Because he's not a cowboy. <laughs> And you've got the drop on him because he wasn't expecting that because he's an idiot. So uh, go ahead and roll fight plus one. That is exactly one. I got nothing. All right. So that's actually just fine. Um, See, he takes the wounds like you son of a bitch. And he just like lunges with his hands like he's going to go for your throat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Language. And I'm going to try to pop him with the with the. With the revolver, like upside okay. the head. That's two hits. All right, I've got one. Yeah, you got him. He's bleeding like, you know, he's got blood coming out of his, coming out like a bloody lip. And he just spits onto the wall and there's this blood spits 
Oh, and a, a comical amount of blood splatter, right? Like a comical amount of spit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to be. And he, okay, he, he's he's just, he's done messing around. He reaches in to his other, I mean, this is the 90s. We've got sort of this almost John Woo aspect. He pulls out his other Colt 45 and just starts blazing. Perfect. Like he dives backward with the two guns sideways. And I try, I, I... What I do is I'm going to I'm going to hop onto a chair like one of the uh, an office chair with one foot and try to like kick like wheel kick myself behind a table. So like to like dive onto the chair, it's going to slide and I'm going to like knock over a table in the process and like get behind it for cover. OK, so go ahead and give me stunt. Two hits. All right. I've got one. Uh, so you've got to die up on this guy now, uh, and you flip up the table just in time as one, two, three, four, five, six bullet holes are into it. And he's, he's, yeah, you see him kind of curse under his breath and he just like rears up, kind of kicks like he's a bull and he's just going to shoulder charge the table. And as he's doing that, I'm going to like hop to my feet and give him one, one more like Actually, I'm not even, it's not gonna, I'm gonna like conk him upside, like conk him on top of the head as I'm gonna bring down the shotgun, like f- just forward, head on, cock him right on top of the head. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so you're at fight plus one. Two hits. Okay. Um, I think that'll do it. Uh, you've, you've, you've got four hits on it or four successes on him. He just, you, you hit him. He's not like, he's not unconscious, but he's definitely out of the fight. He's like, all right, all right, you can take her, but you'll never stop the Eagles. So he leans down. He leans down. He says, I don't need to stop the Eagles. And he looks back because she's going to do it for me. You try, you just try. And that's when we he he like we get the we get the perspective shot as he like kicks him like we get the we see it from Big John's perspective as he like kicks him in the head and knocks him out. (laughs) Ellen's not uh, not super happy to be in this predicament, but she feels better. She's like trying to get your attention like (laughs) he uh, he goes and he rips off the tape a little too quickly. Sorry, what sorry, you- sorry. It's look, it's better that than the alternative. Listen, I'm here to help. Wait, you're not the chief. Who why are you here? Chief ain't chief ain't coming. Support ain't coming. I'm the best you've you're got. Killing me. You are killing me. <sighs> look, okay, I got I got an idea. Um why don't you come with me? And uh, she starts walking out of the room and hangs a right around the corner. And he's following right behind. Uh, at this point, doing uh, like he's he's limping behind and he's like, oh, God. Damn, ah, yeah. Oh, oh no, 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 no. And he reaches into his pocket and pulls out the Sudoku book and it's got blood on the page that he's just been working. on. He's like, no, no, I just I just figured out my ex my X-Wing fighter or whatever. I just, ah, ah, put it, put, just hang it on the laundry. It'll be fine in an hour. Um, and, uh, so at this point we're going to do what are called character scenes. Okay. So that's the end of act one. We've, uh, you've, you know, found big John, you've stopped, you've stopped him. You've got, uh, Ellen McKenzie, the state witness back in your corner. um, so at this point, you get uh, two chances to do a few things to recover or possibly get some information, uh, just the kind of stuff that you do in, you know, quick cuts between the action scenes. Mm-hmm. So you should have a list of four things in front of you. Um, those are the usual, but if you have an interesting idea, I'm always willing to hear it. Let me pull that list up in front of me. All right. So for the... Uh, for the folks at home, uh, you have the option to rest up or treat your wounds, which will allow you to erase one of your stress points. 
You can refocus by sort of narratively reintegrating the one of the elements that you used to recover that checkbox. You can gather some intelligence, which gives you the opportunity to potentially gain bonus dice when you act on it. Or you can do some kind of side personal task, pick up an item, uh, something interesting, and that might give you some other kind of mechanical benefit, which we can discuss based on whatever's whatever's kind of got your whatever you got your eye on. Okay, so I think the first thing I want to do is refocus and try to get my vigilant my vigilante roll back. So sell me that. Yeah. So um, I follow her. We go into like a back room, basically. Mm-hmm. And I am just throwing things on the bed. Like I've, I throw my revolver. I check out. I've got like f- like seven bullets left for it because mm-hmm. I've got a few. Like just I've got like three in the three in the gun and like four than like a handful that I've been carrying. Okay, so you're not using speed loaders. You're you're just doing it one at a time. Yeah. No. This is okay. Uh, so I've got that. I throw the shotgun. I count the shells. I've got like three shells of shotgun. I pull out a knife like I've got a pocket knife and I'm just like looking at it and I'm like, OK, I don't know if it's enough to take down an army, but it might just be enough to get us out of here. And yeah, Ellen, Ellen looks and she she nods and says, if anything's gonna. So I like that. Go ahead and erase the check mark on vigilante. So you'll have that again for the next act. And what about your other cut? Uh, I think the other cut is uh gather intel all right and that's fine that's perfect because that's what i think ellen was planning on leading Mm -hmm. you to to begin with um and so uh if you don't mind me taking the lead on this one she you know reaches into a backpack that was uh next to the bed you can only presume that like she was either staying there or maybe that's where they had her sleeping um and reaches in and pulls out you know a state highway map it go. She's drawing a line from uh, where you are, the uh, the San Madrea Lodge, and then draws a line over to uh, San Antonio, and then on up. Oh, let's say it's I forty five. Yeah, it's it's I forty five up to Austin. Austin, you know the yes. capital of Texas that we knew and didn't have to look up. Sure, uh, and she says. The Eagles think they can take the state, and the way they're going to do it is just armed taking over the Capitol building. Just, you know, you know, straight up right into your hometown. Uh, the way I see it, we just need to cut them off at the pass. Because, um, I mean, if you're going to if you're going to get me there and I'm going to testify, I'm not going to be able to do squat if they own the place. Yeah, looks like we got a time limit, but lucky for them. Nobody knows the streets of San Antonio better than Jackson Alamo. I've been running these highways for a long time. All right. Um, so uh, we'll we'll cut briefly to, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, uh, Austin, Austin School District, um, Santa Ana, Santa Ana Elementary. Uh, where your wife is at the payphone again, yeah, the, putting a coin in and dialing your beeper. We're going over this, and like, yeah, the beeper goes off again, and I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I forgot to call. You don't have one of these fancy cell phones, do you? Because I got, ah, oh, I got to call my wife. Damn it. Damn there's, it. There's, there's a payphone around the corner, but we don't have a lot of time. She looks at her watch. Look, look, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm not afraid of the Eagles. I'm not afraid of what they've got. I'm not afraid of what they can do. But I'll tell you what I am afraid of. I got to get to that payphone. Look, and she she looks at her watch. The, you, you probably have about two minutes. We're we're on borrowed time here as it is. Two minutes. And he looks at his he he he's, he pulls back his sleeve and he's got like a digital watch that was a gift that his kid gave him. Two minutes. All right. Time me. And he goes. He just bursts out the door and like. You know, we get uh, we get the Breakfast Club homage shot where he's running and he kind of hits the wall a little bit to take a, t- a corner too hard or something. He gets to the payphone and he pick, jams the quarter in and he calls up his wife. All right. Wait, Jackson, where are you? <laughs> the, the pageant starts in an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Great. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. Honey, listen. 
you're not going to want you. I know you don't want me to say work happened, but of course work happened. I've, it's a day that ends in Y. That's listen. It's it's not like it's not like the other times. This is big and there's I've heard that before. I know you have, honey. I know you've heard it before, but just you got to believe me. I would, look, I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm giving you my word. I'm going to be there. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Be there. You know Courtney's counting on you. Seven o'clock. That's 86 minutes. Time me. And he hangs up the phone. And she she looks at the receiver as it's going beep, beep, beep. And like sighs and hangs it up and goes back into the elementary school. All right. So uh, that... uh, that I think we will uh, will so for gathering intel. Uh, I'm going to say what that's going to allow you to do is to be ahead mm-hmm. of the uh, Eagles caravan rather than behind it, uh, and that's going to give you a little bit of an advantage as you uh, try to either interdict them or outrun them. And we'll we'll handle the dice the dice mechanics of that when we get to it. Okay. But otherwise, uh, we're pretty much ready to jump into Act Two. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So. Uh, I imagine we see uh, Jackson on the highway uh, and Ellen's, you know, kind of huddled up and hu- huddled up behind him on the motorcycle. I doubt I doubt this is a two seater. It doesn't have a sidecar or anything. No, she's yeah, there. She's huddled up. She has on a police motorcycle helmet, the one that he refuses to wear. Oh, because if somebody's going to get out of this crash and she's like leaning over and screaming, can we go a little slower? And he laughs and he like revs the gas and t- goes faster. Uh, yeah, it's like what wh- wh- it'd probably be like 120, 130. And you mm-hmm. like buzz by a uh, like a highway patrol car and they flick on their lights briefly. And then they realize, I know that guy. And he, he looks to the unnecessary partner in his car is like, that's Jackson, isn't it? You know it. Crazy son of a bitch. Yes. And he takes a swig of his like, you know, unnecessarily large cup of 7-Eleven coffee or whatever. Uh, the words double big gulp conspicuously facing outward. Got to catch that camera. Got to catch that product placement. Oh, yeah. Got to make a little got to make some money because, you know, Harley's not paying all the bills, right? No. So, yeah, we uh, we continue um, and you just like. Uh, I think this is a pretty good opportunity to montage some, uh, you know, some interesting driving. Let's say, you know, you get off the uh, you get off the exit and over your shoulder, you see the caravan uh, going around a corner about to jump onto I-45. That's that's them, isn't it? It's a it's either them. It's either them or Woodstock started a little early. All right. Um, so I'll have you make a stunt roll to see, uh, you know, just how well you get, you get out in front of these guys. Right. Um, it's basically going to determine whether you get to choose the terms of engagement or whether I do. All right. Oh, uh, that's zero hits. Uh, okay. I've got, but, oh, I'm sorry. I owe you an extra die from the uh, character scene. So go ahead and roll one more for me. Still zero. Still okay. zero. Uh, so I'm looking at one. Okay. So I'm going to say the way it stands now, you are still going to get ahead of him. I'm not going to take that away from you. I'm going to tag an element here. Okay. I'm going to tag be there for my family in that like I am, you know, we, we get, we get a shot of, we see the car start to turn and like, I'm not speeding up to meet them, but like I get like a half a glimpse at my watch and it's been like 14 minutes and I'm like, 86 minutes time me and i like hit the gas as hard as i can okay go ahead and re-roll those dice for me because i mean you're looking at six dice right now you yeah. gotta get, get ahead of these guys how is that still zero hits oh you're killing me i am i am outraged you can tag another element if you want but i get the feeling you probably want to save them at this point i think i'm gonna save them for the big showdown okay that's fine so um yeah, you know, you know exactly where they are, but you're a little bit you're you're a little bit behind schedule um, and you see what looks like it's not a military model Humvee. It's a uh, it's like it's like a, a almost like a, a the the civilian Hummer that they turned into a technical by bolting, you know, that 
riveted steel plate to the sides and instead of instead of like a machine gun mount there's just a guy standing out of the sunroof and uh you know that he can wheel up like an ak or something um Mm. and so he looks over and he says who the hell is that and he's he like wheels up the rifle and he's about to turn it toward you and i I think about like maybe ramming the, the the truck or the Humvee. And then I remember that Ellen's in the back seat and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah. You're not going to, you're not going to play big truck with something that's, you know, six, seven, eight times as heavy as you are. So I, uh, I hit hard, like I hit hard to the left and I'm going to try to get between it and some of the other like cars in the convoy. Right. So that it starts like opening fire and lighting up some of the other cars. Okay, I like where your head's at. All right. Let me real quick go ahead and set some difficulty here because um, and actually uh, I think I'm going to make this a countdown challenge. So okay. I've got um, five countdown clocks in front of me. Uh, so you effectively have five exchanges to deal with this convoy or get out you know, get away from it before they before they get to the before they get to the state Senate Mm -hmm. or at least until like it gets to the point where, you know, I don't know, maybe you're out of gas or something. We'll figure it out if it comes up. All right. Five exchanges. Yeah, I think I'm going to like start weaving in between them as they start to open fire so that they light up their own cars. I like it. Okay. Uh, Okay. so go ahead and give me stunt. Um, And uh, again, just because I want that uh, character scene to have some effect, go ahead and take a bonus die on this one because you're still sort of in the opening of your engagement. All right. That is two hits. All right, cool. I've got one. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, you see uh, one of the uh, one of the Humvees just like get lit up in the grill and in the tires and it flips over and it like it skids to a stop. And then for no reason at all, just explodes into a fireball. Mm -hmm. Um, And so uh, there's uh, there's another guy who's doesn't quite look like Joe Don Baker, but he's he's. He, he was wearing like a like a like a black hat instead of a white one. He's mm-hmm. very clearly this guy's like brother and he's pissed off because he didn't get his scheduled call from Big John. And so he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it can't be. And he just tries to sideswipe into you and knock you off the road. And I think I think as as that's happening, I'm trying to maintain I'm trying to like main like keep on the bike. And I'm also yelling back like, you need to take you need to take the handles. You need to take the wheel on this. As I'm gearing up to do something extra dumb next time. Like but oh, right now, I'm just man. trying to, like, keep keep the car steady. OK. Go ahead and give me stunt then. All right. Three hits. Oh, I love it. OK, yeah. So, um. How did you want to spin this? Like, is there a way you could call this success as you like slow these guys down? Or did you want to take that as advantage forward? Uh, I'll call this success. I think what happens is he sideswipes me a little bit and I start to go off the road. But then like I'm going to uh, make a big arc. Like I go off of one of these two lane desert highways. I go off into the sand and we just see the cloud of sand come around. And now I'm now like the truck and Jackson are playing pickup are playing chicken with one another. And okay. He veers off the road. And as soon as like he hits the sand, his car flips. All right. I like it. Um, okay. So you've got three hits now. You need just three more. So you're doing pretty well so far. Um, all right. So, yeah, big, big Bill jumps out of the truck and he is pissed and he like reaches in for his blocky cell phone and calls and he says, I don't care how many people you have to kill. Just shoot this idiot. And uh, I'm screaming back like, you got to take the wheel. You got to take the wheel. Or, you know, you know, this is on. Just make sure you get to safety. Make sure you get out of here. And I start to stand up like I'm oh, like God. still. 
I start to stand up as I'm about to jump onto one of the one of the the Humvees. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a stunt roll, please. Two hits. Okay, so I'm looking at three. Um, the way I read this right now, uh, you do it, but you land real hard on your on your belly, and it like I, it's not quite like cracking a rib, but you're like really winded. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be one stress, but I'm also going to, but you'll also be on the truck. Mm -hmm. Are you cool with that? Or do you want to tag something? Oh, absolutely. No, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely cool with that. Okay, cool. All right. So you're on the truck and, uh, it's you, uh, and you know, the guy like, uh, he can't, his AK doesn't have the swivel, right? So Mm -hmm. he drops down, he leans out the window with a pistol and he's just going to shoot you. And I think I am going to, um, like, I'm on, I'm holding on, and I'm going to, like, let go with one arm and try to, like, pull, basically, like, I'm holding on to, like, there's a bike rack or something on top of, like, something on the Humvee. Like a luggage rack. Yeah. And I'm holding on that, and I'm going to, like, swing with everything but one arm to try and, like, like head scissor him and drag him out of like throw him from the Humvee. Oh, I love it. Okay, yeah. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see what happens there. Would you, would you call that fight or stunt? Uh, I read this as fight. All right. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. Two hits. Yeah, you got him easy. Um, and yeah, so he is you know thrown free from the vehicle, and uh, there's just the driver left. And he's panicking, right? He's like swerving left and right. And he's just trying to throw you off. And I am now I'm holding on with one arm and all it's, you know, far away shots, definitely far away shots, head obscured. I'm going to try to swing back and like grab onto the luggage rack and then kick my legs into the car so I can climb inside. And you see you see Ellen in the in the uh, like way, way in the back of the shot. And then it, it cuts to her face as she's, you know, like gritting her teeth driving this motorcycle he's like jackson what are you doing i'm saving the war he can't he can't hear no 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 we gotta we gotta play like he can remember this is a low budget flick you're absolutely right you're absolutely right he starts to do it and we get a shot of his of his face just as he starts to do it i'm saving the world and he tries to kick inside of the of the humvee all right let's see that is two hits. Okay. Uh, I I think... So, here's what's interesting is... Uh, so, on one hand, you have technically failed because you have five hits and you're out of time. Um, but if we let that stand, what I'm going to say is he, like, drives the vehicle directly into the floor of the state senate. Hmm. Uh, I'm actually going to... I'm going to tag an element for before that, though. Okay. I think that's the fail condition. Right. Because if I tag my vigilante and it's basically like I come in and like kick him in the face. Okay. I can re-roll my other three dice and see if I can get some more hits. One more hit out of that. Yeah. I got one more hit. That'll do it. Okay. Yeah, you you definitely got him. (laughs) Ha ha. Okay, this is great. I have an idea. Okay, so they're dealt with. The convoy is just in flames, except for the one remaining Humvee that you're driving now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you look down at your watch, and inexplicably, a bunch of time has passed, and it's like, you know, like 15 minutes left. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to give you one last challenge, and that is to make it to your daughter's recital on time. All right. So, Man. so uh, what has happened is uh, we get a shot. We 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 get a shot of the two cops from earlier and the chief. We get a shot of earlier. We get a shot of the two cops from earlier and the chief, and they've set up like a roadblock because now they know that like this. They know that this militia is coming. They know that like things are going down, and they've set everything up in place. Right? They've got right. roadblocks. Uh, so I and the the Humvee, they've got snipers, they're prepared to shoot, and one of them, like, 
we get the we get the bolt the the sniper scope shot and it's like we see the dots on Jackson's chest and he's just about to take the shot we hear on the radio I can take the shot I've got the shot and the chief is on the on the binoculars is like no no hold your fire that crazy son of a bitch you think he's trying to make it to the recital boss <sighs> I think I don't think there's a damn blockade in this world that's going to stand between Jackson Alamo and his kids recital. And at that moment, uh, the Humvee, he, he sees the blockade and he just like, he leads back and just go, he's like, lets out. He's just <laughs> and he hits the gas as hard as he can. Okay. Go ahead and give me a stunt roll, please. All right. That is two two hits. Okay, well, I've got none, which makes that a critical. So the 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 police chief says, no, 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 stand down. Give that man an escort. And so, yeah, the shot that we see, uh, we see Ellen pull up on the bike and she like stumbles off and is coughing and gagging and police go to grab her. They like put a code on her like they're going to treat her for shock or something. Oh, and then she looks up at the chief and she's like, you? You wouldn't send help, are you? Are you with them? No. No, I I couldn't. I just... How much blood would there be on my hands if I sent my boys out there? I think we both know there's only one man that could do this job. And he's got places to be. And she looks off at the horizon and is just like... That crazy son of a bitch. And so I think as the credits roll... Uh, we see Jackson as the, you know, as his daughter is about to go on stage, uh, stumbles into the auditorium, like slams the doors open in this really like dramatic fashion. And the crowd turns o- turns o- around and looks back at him. And he he's bleeding. He's got a broken rib. So he's clutching his chest. He's bleeding from the leg. Yes. And he walks over he's limping he sits next to his wife who is just like mouth agape and he's got a lit cigarette in his mouth because it's the 90s and, and action movie heroes could smoke yeah so he's got the lit cigarette and he just leans back and his daughter comes on and does a number from annie get your gun oh my god and he's leaning back and he's just cowboys and so I think as the uh, I, I think as the like the image fades to black to the credits, you know, the wife leans in and kisses him mm-hmm. because, you know, the whole uh, dramatic kiss. Oh, and everything's everything's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And inspirational music starts playing. Mm-hmm. All right. I love it. And that is a wrap on No More Heroes. Uh, no More Cowboys. No, I think you're it right. Was. That is a and that is a wrap on No More Cowboys. That was a good show. I really enjoyed that. And that's game. Well, Jeff, it's been a pleasure playing with you. Oh, you as well. This has been so much fun. I damn, I really like this game. I really like this game a lot. Oh, that's fantastic. So thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a blast. Real quick before we wrap up, where can people find your work online? Uh, so you can find me on Facebook as at a sh- saddle shaped games. Uh, my website, you can find my socials, go to bit.ly slash saddle shaped. And the game itself is available on drive through RPG. Just look up just got real. Perfect. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much. This has been an absolute treat. Now I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it future me. Thanks, Pass Me. And thanks again to Jim for coming on to the show. That game is so much fun. It really, the thing about that game that I love is it really perfectly captures the very simple, very high octane, very forward moving fun of an action movie. It feels so genre right, and knowing that it's so lightweight and zero prep, it's just a fantastic game. Which is to say, be sure to check out the show notes for more information on Just Got Real, and be sure to follow Jim on Twitter at TheAgentZero. Then while you're on Twitter, follow this show at Party of One Pod, then like the show at Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. If you really enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a social media shout out, or a word of mouth recommendation. All three of those things help us do bigger, better, and cooler things. As I said at the top of the show, you can also check out Patreon.com slash Party of One Podcast. 
Patreon dollars help pay for equipment fees, hosting costs, convention appearances, and the like, and Patreon backers get access to bonus material, mini podcasts, and interviews. If you'd like to hear more from me, check out All My Fantasy Children, the character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast powered by your listener prompts, hosted by me and my best friend, Aaron catano Saez. You can find that at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates, coming onto the show, or you're like me and you're really emotional about the Golden Lovers getting back together, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. Well, that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. Never gonna die.